Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report, and we've got the latest information from Harley Schlanger and the LaRouche Foundation. Of course, the moment of truth in Atlanta, Glass-Steagall, or America is doomed, and this is a real fact. This is not made up. Detroit, the arsenal of democracy or test case for fascism. If the federal government gets away, they block the uh, suits to stop the bankruptcy. This is a very big deal. Uh, that's why the first people to freak out were not Americans. They were J- Chinese because they knew the finances. If America has a bond run, the, Jap- the Chinese are holding trillions of dollars of debt. And by the way, they owe us money, too. We'll be talking about that um, today in Hour 3 with jo- Joanna Bianco. Um, and then, uh, of course, we have Wall Street Mafia in desperate drive to stop Glass-Steagall. <laughs> yeah, the Mafia. They're definitely the Mafia for no doubt at all. Uh, Harley, what are the latest stories and what's going on? Obviously, the center story is the economy and Glass-Steagall. What's happening? Well, let me just give you a sense of how hysterical the Wall Street banks are. There was a uh, motion introduced to the National Caucus of State Legislators Conference in Atlanta uh, the conference convened on Monday, and Monday afternoon there was a hearing in their finance committee, and a Delaware state senator introduced a resolution calling for the NCSL, the National Caucus of State Legislators, to endorse the National Glass-Steagall legislation. Now, 24 states, there have already been uh, state representatives and state senators who have introduced resolutions in 24 states to support Glass-Steagall. There's a large article in Politico yesterday about how this battle is heating up. Uh, What Politico reported is what you and I had already discussed, which is that J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo are sending lobbyists around the state legislatures telling people that they threaten the jobs of the banking community in their uh, state if they support what they call unfriendly legislation, namely Glass-Steagall. So this has been going on. It was even reported in in Politico. What happened Monday is that there was a a Cloutier, who's a senator from Delaware, and then Perry Clark, who's an excellent senator from uh, Kentucky, supported, introduced the resolution. Cloutier's a Republican, Perry Clark's a Democrat, and then Lamar Lemons, who's from Detroit, a former state uh, legislator who's now the president of the Detroit City uh, uh, School Board and who is African-American, also spoke all in favor of Glass-Steagall. After that hearing, lobbyists from the banks honed in on uh, uh, Senator Cloutier, and they basically browbeat her and bullied her into withdrawing the resolution. And so what this means is that you have so much fear among people from J.P. Morgan and and Wells Fargo that Glass-Steagall could be passed, that they are going after state legislators who are supporting it. They're calling up people in in South Dakota who introduced the bill there. Uh, We caught them talking to people in California, trying to get the California bill removed from the assembly, because we now do have a bill in California. Now, what's behind this? Well, J.P. Morgan Chase right now is facing about six potential criminal investigations. Now, I say potential because under Holder and Obama, they will never be held accountable for their crimes. Right. But if Glass-Steagall gets implemented, they will face years in prison. And you'll like this. We did a big rally in front of J.P. Morgan Chase on Monday with a gigantic poster of Jamie Dimon in an orange jumpsuit. And Dimon, of course, is the CEO and chairman of the board of J.P. Morgan Chase. The thousands of J.P. Morgan Chase employees who went into the bank were horrified to see it, although some came out later and through side doors and called us over and said, good luck, I, I hope you get rid of this guy. Yeah, these are real bad criminals. Now, the... Well, um now, one the other situation, thing that's just, uh, Dr. Situation, one, other thing that's a, one other thing that's a new development, mm-hmm. uh, the Swiss Financial Regulatory Agency, FINMA, put out a report last week saying that the two banks, UBS and Credit Suisse, which are considered too big to fail, are prepared to do bail-ins of up to 300 billion euros apiece of their deposits. That is, 
uh, almost four hundred billion dollars will be confiscated from depositors if one of those banks gets in trouble. And then today, the Financial Stability Board, which is from the Bank for International Settlements, but the current chairman of the Financial Stability Board is uh, the Mark uh, Carney, who's also the president and the chairman of the Bank of England. They announced that they have plans for bail-ins for nine too-big-to-fail insurance companies, including AIG, Prudential, and others. So as we warned alone during the time of the Cyprus uh, crisis, the bail-in is the plan of the future. Uh, now we see it played out with Dodd-Frank in the United States, with the FDIC, with the Bank of England, the Bank for International Settlements, and now the Swiss National Bank. Exactly. Now what uh, what's happening is there's a number of systems around the world that need the Glass-Steagall type legislation. We see China and Japan going completely in the wrong direction. Maybe you have some comments about abonomics and how it's failing there. And how? Well, yeah, sure. What it shows is austerity and quantitative easing don't solve economic crises. They <laughs> worsen them. The only right, he thing wants they to lower the corporate tax rate and raise the, the tax rate for the citizens uh, so that foreign corporations can come in and strip mine uh, Japan. And the only thing it does in the short term is provide a little bit more liquidity, a little bit more time for the banks, but it does nothing. In fact, it worsens the economy. We know that already from what we've seen in Europe. Now we're getting the Japanese example and the U.S. example. This is incompetent as economics, but its intent is not to solve the economic crisis, but to kill people. Right. Now, why is that? Well, because the people who run these financial institutions never intended for there to be 7 billion people in the world. They personally think, that, like Prince Philip of uh, Great Britain, uh, Prince Charles of Great Britain, uh, the leading computer analysts of the Population Council, they all say there should only be 1 billion people on the planet. And how do you get rid of 6 billion people? War and economic misery. And least- pestilence. Yeah. Unleash starvation, and then disease will follow. Right. Now, <clears throat> I'll put a little thesis out. The, the ancient cultures um, and uh, knew that there were periodic cataclysms that happened to the Earth. And one that's well documented now that occurred roughly mm, somewhere between twelve and 13,000 years ago, long before our, quote, modern history, wiped out most of the population of Earth and society and civilization kind of crawled back from this disaster. There's various theories, whether it's a... a uh, supernova that occurred, or more likely, the actual use of the return of the nemesis dwarf star, which is our dwarf twin, which is a red dwarf star, not a brown dwarf or a planet. And that that uh, currently what we're having is the same cycles repeating, the same cycle, in fact, that was known by the high priests of ancient Sumer in Egypt and going back to Atlantis, that the peop- keepers, and we talked about this yesterday with uh, with a Brent Sr., who is the head of the family of 10, 10 kids, uh, Doomsday Castle. They had a show last night. They're going to have seven more on Nat Geo. And, of course, his thesis was the government's preparing. Well, they're not preparing for anything, to be honest with you. And if they were, they'd hire them the power grid. They changed the financial system. They put up class steagall so that the financial disaster wouldn't cause rioting in the streets and starvation. They uh, were literally being set up. And I'll tell you the reason why. They want control. That's why they want these dialectics of destruction. That's why they don't fix Fukushima, because they want it to cause genocide. They want people to not st- having babies. They've even put out, out an article, I think, what was the last Time magazine last week, it says, a family without children. Because yeah, the child-free the globalists, families. Child-free families. And the thing is, they don't want us to interfere with their survival when they use Suckland Islands, Svalbard, Norway, and the stem cell the seed vault that they have for creating a new human race after the collapse of the current one, but they don't want us to interfere, so they need to create disasters now, including economic, so that they can maintain control before the galactic and cosmic disasters come and they don't have control. That's what's going on. Welcome back, and uh, Harley, um, the timeline, I know I've heard, you know, I agree with what we call 
percent of plus of what Joel Skousen says. He doesn't think any economic disaster is coming. No, we are going to have an economic disaster, but it will, will not be the end. It'll be the resurrection of a new system. I see the very first thing is that, number one, Obamacare is not going to go completely away, but it's going to be mutated. They're going to remove the IRS. That's, there's no way anybody can stomach Democrat or Republican, the IRS running Obamacare. We also know that the current bond market is going to blow out, which is being put on purpose. In fact, your article you posted and sent to me makes it very clear that uh, they want to blow it out. I mean, the arsenal of democracy, the test case of Detroit. Let's talk about this for a minute because we have 19 other districts in the magazines, in financial magazines, that are bigger than Detroit. That as the bond market blows out, we're talking about worldwide depression. The bond market run is going to cause major catastrophe. And every country on earth is jockeying to get in a new biometric world currency, which, by the way, will be a new mutated Fed Reserve uh, that will no longer be considered, quote, American, because it never was American. It's always been a foreign banking system with five of the six voting banks being European. <clears throat> so that charter is over December 24th, which is only a few months away. My guess is this is all a dialectic by design disaster, and I think it's going to play out really soon. But it won't be the end. People will be able to go back to the movie theaters and do things. But what will happen, they're going to be facing the fact that they'll have a trackable ID, whether it's an ID card or their cell phone. Uh, just like uh, Google, I know PayPal is putting out a phone app where you can actually pay your bills after you take a photo of yourself and get a facial biometric scan or new, uh, the new upgraded iPhone that's, uh, that the, uh, the iPhone people are going to release that has fingerprint analysis and can tell who you are biometrically. This is all based on the idea of a biometric world currency where they track every move you make, every purchase, every magazine, and they know where you are down to a cubic meter of space. And if people don't see the tyranny as worse than the IRS, I don't know what they're thinking of because they'll have a tax at every transaction. If you give your kid 10 bucks, one buck will go to the government. This is how crazy this is. And the big six times more denial of U.S. passports isn't because they're fleeing the country. They've already fled. These are expatriates that don't want to pay taxes. And the new tax laws are going to crunch them unless they give up their American citizenship. Uh, maybe you can comment on Detroit and the citizenship stuff because the international system of a biometric world currency is coming on us real quick. Well, let me comment on the Detroit situation, because it's not just Detroit now. There are about five school districts and cities around Detroit, all being put under emergency financial managers. And Governor Snyder is now uh, putting a, together a statewide committee of emergency financial managers so that your vote means nothing. You can't vote for an elected representative who can defend you or protect you because they're giving every power to these bankruptcy attorneys who are masquerading as emergency financial managers. And the first thing they do is make a separate deal with the banks that have been involved in creating a cascading debt crisis for the cities and counties and local governments. Uh, one of the slugs we sent you, one of the links, right. is on $30 billion that's already been stolen from right. counties and cities using the rigged interest rates of LIBOR. And let me, let me just explain this for a moment yeah. so people yeah. really understand it. Yeah, very important. Uh, a, sw a swap is a so-called insurance agreement that you'll be able to pay off your bond even if there's a problem uh, with the income for the entity that has to pay off the bond. It's sort of an insurance policy. Now, the problem is that the banks that market the bonds are the ones who are now selling also the interest rate swaps so that a, a condition for taking the loan is that you buy their insurance. That, now, that's the insurance a, that seems to be a conflict of interest, which means it should be considered a criminal activity. It should be. Now, then it goes one step further because the contracts are written so that if the interest rates move in a way that's unfavorable for the borrower, then the insurance kicks in and the insurance company will pay the difference. But if the insurance rates drop, then the borrower has to pay the seller, that is, the, the banks, for uh, uh, the insurance that they wrote for them. Now, here's where it gets really criminal. The banks knew in every single case where they sold these things that the rates were going to drop. 
because they controlled the rates. So, in other words, they sold contracts that they knew would lead to the money having to come from the entities, the cities, the counties, whatever, uh, because they had rigged the markets. Now, this is J.P. Morgan, it's Bank of America, it's Wells Fargo, it's Citibank, it's Deutsche Bank. Uh, we just did a survey and found that there are 13 cases against Deutsche Bank. They've put $3 billion into their legal defense fund. J.P. Morgan Chase has about 10 cases that they're handling. And these include uh, all sorts of swindles, uh, selling uh, mortgage-backed securities, which they knew were no good, and so on. And in every case where they've been caught, they get a deferred prosecutorial agreement, which means they pay a fine, they don't admit guilt, and then they can continue doing the same thing. Right, in now, other words, it's cost of business. To... Cost of business, right? Exactly. And the only way to stop it is with Glass-Steagall so that these companies are not allowed to hold your money as deposits and then sell you uh, speculative instruments and force you to insure them through buying their swaps. Wow. This is so evil, and the thing is, it's actually sucking money out of the real economy to an artificial economy, and it's being not only allowed, it's being promoted by European governments and, and transnational corporations, as and well as the U.S. Pension, government, and the U.S. government, as well as these pension funds that take fund pensions like Calpers and so on and invest them in these derivatives, because it's all one big mess. Well, in in the Detroit case. $225 million was negotiated by Kevin Orr, the bankruptcy manager, to go directly to three banks that sold the swaps. So that's 15% of the total revenue for Detroit for that year. Now, meantime, they're knocking down the pensions by uh, 80 to 90%. Now, an average pensioner in Detroit makes nineteen hundred dollars a month now you get the story they're rich they they uh, gained the system nineteen hundred a month is not really much to live mm. on in retirement because they no. get no social security what happens if you knock it down to ten percent that means they're getting a hundred or i'm sorry a thousand no they're getting a hundred ninety dollars a month to live on you can't do that no <clears throat> and these are, is, many people are sick, they, they can't work second jobs, they're retired, plus they paid into the system. It's their money that's it's being their money. Well, what they're doing actually is they're seizing private money through a technicality of a scheme where they knew the interest rate was going to drop because they gamed it, and at the same time, this game, they didn't have to invest anything, but they're going to get paid out 80 cents on the dollar, and the pensioners get 20. Yep. That's and the government, is. the federal government, by the way, and their judges are collaborating. So Obama, who says he's out for the black man and the and, and, and Hispanic and everybody, the poor man and the middle class, hogwash. He's out there to he's destroy you. Yeah. Obamanomics. A hard hat on, wrecking ball. Use that, uh, maybe use that analogy for a little humor here. <clears throat> Welcome back, and a little humor to start off. Uh, I see the LaRouche Foundation is very positive. Uh, it's almost like walking in and seeing a senior surgeon. It's very common, collected while patients in the trauma room, and I've done a lot of trauma surgery. And uh, you're there assisting the head trauma surgeon, and patients wheeled in, and they've had, uh, they're still bleeding and oozing, but, you know, they're going to have surgery. And, uh, the surgical procedures will be a, uh, a uh, too big to failectomy, an abominectomy, and a radical uh, Glass-Steagall, um, uh, you know, Dacron graft to reestablish credit to flow to the limbs of the public uh, uh, businesses, so people actually have a real economy again. So. Uh, if you use the analogy, I think the, the master surgeon is Lyndon LaRouche and all of the great people like yourself and others in the foundation that know that we can, you know, 
as stewards of the earth, re, you know, redirect the Nawapo North American Water Power Project, uh, protect the planet from coronal mass ejections and space weather, uh, deal with credit instead of a debt system, uh, get rid of these two big to fail banks. We have a system literally that is sucking us down because the ultimate purpose is not just to get control of all the money in the world or power, it's to kill the vast majority of the human population by a bunch of maniacs. That's what we're facing. Well, and let me just tell you the other thing Lyndon LaRouche said when he was briefed on the situation in uh, Atlanta, that the J.P. Morgan Chase was so aggressive in their defense of their right to steal and, and cheat. Now, what he said is that this is why we should be more concerned than ever about the danger of war in the Middle East, because it's precisely at this point when the enemies of mankind are facing a danger that they might lose everything. And Glass-Steagall would mean that J.P. Morgan would probably, if it stayed in business, it would be a small bank, but more likely without any of its top leadership, because most of them would be going to jail. So rather than face that consequence, and rather than working with the government to really write off all their bad debts, they're trying to get the government to keep their bad debts on the book and recognize them and give them money to, to prop them up. You have the same financial elites moving toward war. And so this is why we see the situation in Syria starting to flare up again. You know, Prince Bondar did a series of meetings and Bondar is the head of Saudi intelligence. He's the person more than anyone else responsible for direct coordination and control of the 9-11 operation. Bondar went to Russia and offered Putin uh, a $30 billion arms deal. The Saudis would buy $30 billion in arms and promised they would not use Syria as a gas transshipment location if Putin gave up Assad. Now, Putin listened, according to reports, he listened politely and then told Bondar, no deal. Bondar then said, well, there'll be no Geneva Convention because the opposition is never going to accept that. And then secondly, that the fighting is going to become more intense in September and October. And so you have straightforward criminal activity out of the Saudis who wouldn't do this without full British backup. And then you have the situation in Egypt, which is blowing up today because the Muslim Brotherhood were, were given the orders, stay in the fight, don't back down, and the government didn't back down either. So you had some killing, some rioting going on, uh, and then, of course, you have the threat that Israel will attack Iran. And, and just let me tell you on this, General right. Dempsey is in Israel right now, and a leading Israeli journalist, uh, Benny Kaspin, has an article saying that the U.S. basically has turned the Israeli military command into a base of operations for the U.S. military because they're acting as babysitters for an edgy and dangerous child. And Dempsey's there to meet with the military. Most of the Israeli military is opposed to a strike on Iran. But Netanyahu's crazy, and Netanyahu's prepared to yeah, go. Netanyahu's crazy enough to actually do something and attack. Uh, here, here's the immediate consequences to an attack on Iran that I know from my military experts. Number one, the biopreparate biological weapons that were from Russia after Glasnost and Perestroika were transferred to Iran and secondly to Syria. So they have the most advanced Russian bioweapons from the Cold War. Number two, they have the Shahid missile that now is extended range that can strike anywhere, including all the way to Europe. Number three, they have EMP weapons that they've been practicing for over 20 years, and they can haul a barge two or 300 miles off either U.S. coast, and without any reference to us at all, even a fishing boat, set up a missile 25 miles of boom, a quarter to half of the United States will be in the electronic dark. They have agents with biological weapons on American soil inside the border, right as I speak, waiting for the text message or the code to release them from the back of the fridge and go on a bus ride or train ride and release them to a populated area. People do not have an idea that it's even just something as simple as making a phone call from Iran to the uh, insurance agents for moving oil. 26 to 30 percent of the world's oil plus goes from, actually it's more than that, it's around 33 percent to 36 percent of the world's oil goes through the Strait of Hormuz, which means immediately we have a code blue world depression. So the consequences are 
The state of Israel will be pummeled with missiles. Which, by the way, they have for every real missile in Iran, they have five to six false missile silos, with a territory one side the size of the continental United States, half of it mountainous, and completely impossible for them to know where the actual missiles are before they fire them. These are uh, solid fuel rocket missiles. Uh, and, and, and missiles that basically are preloaded, stuck on the side of a mountain. Uh, and Iran is no slouches. They got drones. They can fly drones over in, at low altitude and come into a country and blow them all to hell. They got fuel air bombs, biological weapons. The, the Iranians have a system that even with our ships, if we think we can take them out, between the Iranians and the Syrians, they have these Hoot super cavitation torpedoes, the Alexander. Uh, a high-speed cruise missile that can travel at Mach 6 when it hits your ship and there's nothing to stop it at all, including our phalanx systems. We, if we try to go to war with Iran and Syria, most of the Russian-based weapon systems will take our boats and put them to the bottom of the Mediterranean and Persian Gulf. We will see thousands of our people die and a good third or half of our navy disappear. We will see not only Israel disappear, but only survivors will be underground in the bunkers and we'll have European cities on fire because if this war starts, it's it's not just America, it's Europe and NATO fighting against Iran, Russia, and China. And this is going to get ugly because the Chinese and the Russians aren't going to tolerate this sitting down. So we could go to a third world thermonuclear conflict if we don't contain this and do it in a proper manner. And whatever Obama's doing is amplifying it and bringing it on further. That's why they have signs in Egypt now that, you know, the, the, the anti Morsi supporters have signs out there saying, hey, you know, Obama and America, you're a supporter of terrorism. These are Egyptians. Are knowing, well, and the Saudis were even smart enough to pull it at four months ago. Saudis, who are no friends of ours, always doing sneaky things in intelligence, etc., they were smart enough to pull the support of Mohammed Morsi because they knew that the totalitarian regime would, would unilaterally try to plan an attack on Israel, and Israel, if they think an attack's going to happen, they'll swat them with nuclear weapons. There well, were three John strikes. McCain, with, John McCain goes over there and, and supports the Muslim Brotherhood terrorists. Now, I'll repeat the, that. The because the man is, he's going to start a thermonuclear war, and the guy is so crazy, he got out of the Alzheimer's unit. And that's, sorry I said that word, but I'm going to tell you, I get so angry over this man, he should not be allowed to speak in public. Because here's what he's done. If the Israelis, knowing that an attack is preeminent, have already used tactical nukes three times in the last three months against Syria, and Syria hasn't responded because they know they're not the real target. The real target is this issue that if this war expands between these Muslim Brotherhood maniacs and uh, and the Al Qaeda Al Nursa cabal tied up with Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and all these Arab Emirates. Uh, and Russia. this war, and, Ru and Russia's back on Chinese backing, this is going to turn into a third world thermonuclear war, and most of humanity will disappear. Well, that's why LaRouche said again that the you can see in the desperation of the bankers in a place like Atlanta that they're preparing for war. That's their policy. That's we can't survive war. This is a, this is a like an ancient prophecy of Atlantis, and I'm one of like the ancient wise ones, and so are you. We're saying, and we learned LaRouche. If we don't turn back from this pathway, there will be no world. There'll be no Earth. There'll be no blue jewel floating around a yellow dwarf star. We will cease to be. back and uh harley uh, i went on a little rant because you know and when i said that word i really do mean it mr mccain it, it wandered out of an alzheimer unit this guy has got a mega demon in him his family was the kind of stunts he pulled off back in the vietnam war and what he did is only because of his relatives being admirals that he got away with and didn't spend the rest of his days in the brig he's a maniac and the neocon maniacs don't care if there's no world left they figure they got a ticket to you know the chocolate factory underground to the hotels, they could care less, the same way as the elite in Israel. They know that if they start a war with Iran, it doesn't matter if you're hit with a brick in the side of the head or you're destroyed with a fuel air bomb or a biological weapon. There won't be a, a Jew, Arab, Christian, or anything left in Israel, including any historic sites. It'll all be vaporized. And people don't know this. If they start this war, this little strip of land, yeah, they'll wipe out all the Muslim nations around them for 
and billions of people with all the advanced nuclear weapons Israel has, but they'll cease to exist. And people don't get this. They don't realize, and they think it's years and years off. I think they're going to try to shove a peace treaty here before the spring. I think Obama and the Yahoo's want to collapse the financial markets like really quickly so they can build a new financial system. But even if they do it temporarily, it won't last. And the Russians and Chinese aren't stupid. They're not going to buy this. Even for two or three years, even the Muslim nations, they'll catch on eventually realizing that America now controls all the electronic divots through the Fed Reserve. It's neither Fed Reserve. All America is is the broodmare, the golem for the beast system of the European bankers that are foisting the austerity fascism and destruction on the whole world while they're uh, kind of entertaining that they will recreate a new civilization once this one crashes because they're hastening its demise. That's what these maniacs are up to. When I see, uh, you know, Bomb Bomb Moran McCain out there it's doing this, and he actually has songs out there. You can go to YouTube, Bomb Bomb Moran. You know, he actually made a kind of play on that word last year. This guy is so nuts. Does he have any consequential idea what will happen if they start a war in the Middle East? Well, you see, the thing you have to realize, and this is why LaRouche brings it up, and people say, well, this is extreme, why are you saying this? But LaRouche brings it up because there are people who are extreme, who actually would be willing to lose the, a significant portion of the world's population rather than to lose their power. And these are the people who created the environmentalist movement. And, you know, you mentioned earlier that, that we are looking to the future. We're, we're talking about progress. Okay. Yeah, you guys are, the, are the, one of the only organizations that actually has a vision. It says in the Bible, my people perish for lack of vision. You, Linda LaRouche, and all the great people and organizations that are affiliated with you have a vision of a world where we can have extended human life, no pollution, limitless energy, safe transport, strong nations, not a global government, a government where nations can make decisions for global issues, but strong, independent nations. Well, and the, key to that, the key to that is the idea of new technologies. The key to that is the idea of progress, of energy flux density. And it means you have leaps. You don't just go sequentially, uh, one technology leads to another. You have leaps. Just as uh, the development of, of coal was a leap over charcoal, and, and oil and natural gas was a leap over coal, and then nuclear was a leap over oil and natural gas, and then you have thermonuclear, you have matter, antimatter. What we need is a real leap right now. You can't get it because credit is totally controlled by central banks that are run by private bankers who are holding on to that credit for the purpose of uh, uh, destroying civilization. So what we have to do is, first of all, free mankind from that danger, which is what Glass-Steagall does. Then secondly, we need to have a credit policy which unleashes credit for physical production, and especially scientific and technologically oriented innovation. Now, that's the key to the future of mankind. Now, if people want to see that done, support our fight for Glass-Steagall. Join us in this fight. You know, give me a call. I'm going to be doing a a tour of some western states in the next couple of weeks where I'm going to be meeting with mostly Republicans and saying to them, don't give me this Republican line that you're opposing Obama. If you're not supporting Glass-Steagall, you're in bed with Obama and Wall Street, because Wall right. Street is who put Obama in. Well, they, they come serious. up with a lame excuse that they're, they're waiting to the 2014 election or 2016. There won't be in America then. Yeah. If we don't put this in now, uh, the next debt bomb that could be a bond market run before Christmas or by next spring, uh, an airborne plague that just shocks the economy because everything stops moving and the economy has a hiccup. Remember, there's this thing called you need a certain amount of velocity in the economy to even maintain it airborne. And if anything happens, a coronal mass ejection that knocks out power for part of the country, an airborne plague, uh, a Mideast war that cuts off supply of oil to not us because we are getting oil from Venezuela and elsewhere, but to other competitors so it drives the price through the ceiling. Anything at all in the long list, longer list, will cause us to go into a cardiac arrest. It's like taking somebody out that has four blocked arteries and spastic other ones and saying we're going to go run to the top of the mountain and expect them to not end up with a cardiac arrest and death that's what we're doing and it's craziness and if and you want to stop is, it if you yeah. want to stop it join our fight for glass steagall 
call my office and tell them you want to sign up for this fight. We're mobilizing legislatures around the country, congressmen, uh, there are town meetings all through the month of August, and we have the details. So if you want to know what your congressman is doing and, and how you can participate, I'm going to give you an 800 number to call. And mm-hmm. don't just write it down and forget about it. Call up and do something, because we can still win this. It's 800-922-2907. Let me give that again. 800-922-2907. And if you want to talk to me, ask for me, Harley Schlanger, at 800-922-2907. We've got to move some Republicans. We've got most of the House, or the, the leader, leading House Democrats for it. We've got a handful of Republicans. We need some other Republicans with some courage. Let, let's put it this way. Fight. Let's start off with this calling to him to question. If you look at the map, and somebody sent me a link with a map of all the people of different Christian religions or of faith, and if people just actually said what they were, if they're you know a good Christian or Jew, if they decide that they have a good moral background, even if they're an atheist, just look at this latest article that uh, Lyndon has up. It says, mankind's existence is called into question. Next. Big question mark by Lyndon LaRouche. Uh, next is, is there going to be a next? Uh, you know, this is a really big question, and the problem is it's our responsibility. Whether it's a thousand or ten thousand years from now, this generation has responsibility to reestablish what it is to have an economy in the third millennium, what it is to have a safe planet where nations aren't in a costly war because bankers profit from it, where we don't have debt or interest, where we have a credit system that doesn't crash the, the supply of money or speculate on food so people can't put it on their table. This is what drove, by the way, the Middle Eastern thing with the so-called Arab Spring. It was driven by derivatives, driving the price of food so high, people in Libya and these other countries couldn't feed themselves. This is why these things happened. And it's all for the profit of a very tiny few that aren't just interested in money or power. They believe, and they have part of their religious ceremony is Megadeth. Not the group. What do they do? Nah. They, they bring in so-called Islamic fundamentalists who want to have jihad against the West, but at the same time, support the policies of the International Monetary Fund. Isn't that right. pretty crazy? Not only that, they they got them set up so the jihadists don't understand. All of their actions against countries like America and Israel will eventually get them fried with nuclear fire. I'm going to tell you what's going on in Syria and Egypt and elsewhere. These nations, if they do make plans, even if Israel thinks it's coming, they won't wait till the first tank comes over the hill or the first plane comes off the tarmac. They're going to fry them on the tarmac. They're going to burn them in their beds. The Israelis, that's why they talk about babysitting them. There's no babysitting the Israelis. They're sitting in a fire pot with people around them that want them to not exist. That's why all these countries don't have them on the map, but they, at the same time, they won't shoot a bullet in their direction because they know that they're going to shoot back. But let me say this, General Dempsey and a group in the American military know that the Israelis are crazy, and they are trying to, to pull them back. They are trying to pull back Obama from going well, ahead with this. It's, it's a tough fight, but they've been that's why to be crazy. the American citizens have to join it. They're, they're, they've been bred to be crazy. You take people and put them in the middle of something like you know, Prison Island, and you have a little spot in the middle, and you say, oh, we're going to drop all these people, we call them Israelis, whatever they are. And they're all in an island full of, you know, malicious mass murderers, right? So the Israelis have been bred to be crazy because it's good to the dialectic of, quote, global banker Zionism. And it's not Zionism from the Bible. It's using them as a fulcrum point for control of the dialectics of chaos on the planet. Very evil. And we got to stop it or we're going to end up stop being. I like that article by Linda LaRouche. We want to read them. It'll all be posted up today. Uh, thank you, and Harley, you'll be back in two weeks. Next week, we'll have another great individual contributor and pundit and source of light from uh, the LaRouche Foundation. That's why every Wednesday, first hour, is dedicated to Linda LaRouche and everything that the visions of what we can have if we change now and take action. Glass Eagle first. Back in a moment.